Hello and welcome back to another Space Engineers Showcase video. In today's video, we're looking at another small mining ship. And this one is called the Extra Large Interplanetary Mining Ship Mark 1.1, which is this lovely thing right here. It's got hydrogen thrusters, it's got atmospheric thrusters, it's got some backup power and Gatling guns to protect yourself from any pesky pirates. It also features a few scripts to help you on your long mining voyages, as well as some additional armor on the side to just help you out if you bump into the stuff while making a big tunnel. Pressing F10 and finding it in the spawn menu, there we go, the extra large interplanetary mining ship is only 2,751 small blocks requiring the decorative block number 2 DLC pack. Now this uses no mods, but a couple of scripts which are listed down here. So what we're going to do now is have a quick look around the outside and then we're going to go make a big hole in the ground. So at the very front we've got a standard cockpit for you to fly this thing. In front of that we've got a spotlight because it's going to get very dark when we start to dig a big tunnel. We've got some Gatling guns just in case you get caught off guard by a pesky drone and we can see plenty of hydrogen thrusters to help push us around. We've got a camera on the left and a small reactor on the right. We don't need that small reactor, but it is nice to have that additional power if the batteries are running low. And we can see just up here an LCD screen with a sensor in front of it, which is the automatic mining sequence in case you want to set a coordinates for this thing to go off and drill by itself. As we move around the side, we'll be able to see the side armor to protect our thrusters and drills just in case you scrape along the edge of your tunnel. And we've got a small LCD screen going along there showing us the name of the ship and the logo of the company who created it. We've got some hydrogen tanks just sitting behind those blocks and as we move around to the back we've got some nice block work there to make it look more like a ship and to help cover up some of the more fragile blocks. As we move all the way around to the back we've got another LCD screen with the name of the ship, four large hydrogen thrusters to push us around, some atmospheric thrusters just to help while on the planet and we've got two hydrogen engines which are there if you need it. We also have a camera to help reverse out, a spotlight to light up the darkness which is very useful when I tested this thing out, and a connector to unload all your gear, a landing gear right there just to snap yourself onto something if you needed to, and yeah, it's just a fantastic design going all the way around it. Coming down and underneath we're going to see a lot of ejectors to get rid of all the unwanted stone. We can see some large atmospheric thrusters hidden away in there, as well as some O2H2 generators and batteries. And as we move all the way along to the front, we then see the bottoms of the front drills. Coming all the way up to the top, there we go. There's the tops of our drills, there's the tops of our hydrogen tanks, some more hydrogen thrusters and some parachutes just in case you need it, with another LCD screen with a logo on top. And that is it for the outside, just a brief overview of everything going on with it. And now it's time to get into my character and show what this thing can do. So number one is to take control of our drills, where we can use our left mouse to mine up all the resources, or the right mouse to make a big hole through a mountainside. Number two is to take control of our Gatling guns if we have an enemy that needs blasting. Number three is for our hydrogen thrusters at the front, so that's for your cruise control if you needed it. Number four is for our spotlight at the front. And number six is to view the camera at the front. So there we are. Number six is for the ejectors underneath. So in the event you needed to keep all the stone, you can always switch that off and keep collecting it. Or you could always change the filters to get rid of stuff you don't need and have that ejected out. Number eight is for our parachutes to open and close. And number nine is for the atmospheric thrusters on and off. Tab number two, we then got our reverse camera to view backwards. And number two, to turn the spotlight right next to it on and off. Number three is for our connector that sits right next to that camera. So if I bring that all the way around, there we go. And number four is to lock or unlock that landing gear right there. Tab number three, we then got some more controls for our thruster and power. So number one and number two is for your thruster override. Number three is to turn the thrusters underneath on and off. Number four and number five are to turn off all the thrusters around the ship. So if we turn that off, it's going to fall down and I'll have to chase it with the camera. Number six is for our hydrogen engine on and off. Number seven is for our O2H2 generators on and off. Number eight is for our hydrogen tank. And number nine is to put the battery into recharge or auto. 
Number one is for our reactor right at the front there in case we need that additional power. Number two is for a projector on and off if we needed to repair the ship in the event we took some colossal damage. Number four, five and six are for our little script that sits on our LCD screen above there. So we can use number six to press OK and we can press number four and number five to go up and down. But this thing right here is for setting up a automated sequence for this ship to go and fly to different locations and start mining. I've showcased this on my channel before where you can basically set up a ship to go and mine at these coordinates. It'll then start mining a certain distance after a while it'll reverse out and then return back to your base wherever that is. And that is it for what this mining ship can do. So now it's time for a very quick thruster test and then we're going to go through our mountainside. So going forwards, we've got a nice amount of speed and stopping as well is bloody fantastic. But that is with nothing in our inventory. Once we've got a bunch of iron in there, we will drift around quite a lot. But that is to be expected when you're full up of goods. Going left and going right, we are quite good. And then going down, we're nice and fast. And going up, we're very fast, which is always necessary when you're trying to fly a heavy ship. You don't want to press C to go down and then keep going down while holding space because you know you're going to come crashing into the ground. So now let's go forwards and start mining through this mountainside. So we're just going to come up to it. Hopefully you stop in time. Turn off our light. Now I'm going to use my right mouse to start making a nice big tunnel all the way through it. I'm going to come into third person and turn this around. I've got some nice spacing between the drills to make a nice tunnel. You could, if you fly perfectly straight all the way through a hill or a mountain, you could create a secret base inside it. You just have to be patient and not go too fast like I was doing right there and bump into something. Otherwise, you're going to have a nasty notch in the road which could damage your ground vehicles when you try and get out of it. So let's go into the camera view. That is what we get. Not too much going on, just the drills and particle effects. We'll just keep going forwards. We we'll just come over to there and turn that spotlight off. And we we'll just keep moving. So I now switch to my left mouse. Now we're into the deep stone and start collecting all of that up. There we are. We're going to very carefully keep going. Collecting up all the stones, we are still perfectly fine to keep going forwards. It will get a little tight in there, but that is why the additional armor on the side is present, just to help protect those thrusters and drills from any unnecessary damage. So we can just keep going forwards like so until we get what we want or we're fed up and then we can reverse out. As you can see there the ejectors are getting rid of all my precious stone so I want to turn that off. And now we can just keep filling ourselves up. But now let's say we're in a tunnel and we can't access our third person camera because of how cramped it is. So we can come to our reverse camera, switch on the light and now we can reverse ourselves out. Of course remembering that the controls are now inverted but we can easily escape this tunnel. And there we go. Jolly good stuff. So how much stone did I collect? Not too much, but enough to nearly fill it all up. And speaking of filling this ship up, if I come over to here and type in cargo, we have got four medium cargo containers and of course the drills to fill up. So you may not want to collect stone with this. You might want to just stick to the precious resources that you desperately need. But that is it for the extra large interplanetary mining ship. It's good for planets, it's good for space, it's got some protection on it, and it has a nice little design. So it'll be in the description below if you do wish to download and play around with it yourself. I highly recommend you do. And I'll be back with another showcase video another day. Bye bye.